Let's see how hard this integral is, the integral of square root of x squared plus 2x. Over there, you see that we are adding the x squared, and then we have the x right here. That's bad, because the table right here only has something squared, and then either minus a number or plus a number. We cannot combine the x squared and the x like that. It's not in the one of these forms yet. And what we have to do first is, we can take a look of the inside quadratic and complete the square. And that's exactly what we have to do. Complete the square of the inside. And we have x squared plus 2x. I have to add some number. This number is going to be the value in front of the x. This is my b value, b is equal to 2. And then you have to make sure we have 1x squared, which we do. That's good. So then you work out this formula, b over 2 squared, and the b is equal to 2. So we have 2 over 2 squared. That will be 1. 1 squared is 1. So what we have to do is we have to add 1 to it. But if I just add 1, I change the entire thing. But it's okay. I can just immediately subtract 1, pretend nothing happened. Okay? And then if you look at this part, the first three terms altogether is going to give you a perfect square, namely x plus 1 to the second power. And then minus 1, we can look at that as minus 1 squared. Okay? So to integrate this, it's the same as integrate that inside of the square root. So let's begin. Say this is the same as the integral of parentheses x plus 1 square minus 1 square dx. OK? So this will give us something square minus a number, another number square, which is the third situation. OK? But then I don't like to look at the x plus 1. Let's do a small substitution before we go. Perhaps I can say something like let u equals to inside function, which is x plus 1, and then du will be the same as dx. This way, it works slightly better, OK? And just in case, if you happen to have a 2, 2x two right here, this will be uh, much better, OK? I will take this integral into the u world first. So this is the same as the integral, and now we will have square root u square, right? That's u, so that becomes u square. And then we have minus 1 squared. Let's just keep it as how it is. And dx is the same as du. And now if you take a look of that, that's exactly the same as this form, where x is equal to the u, and then a is equal to this one. Okay. So to begin, we also say that u, Okay, this is like the x, that u, uh, because here I have u right here, that u equals to I will take the integral into the theta world from u to theta world, okay? 1, because a is equal to 1, times secant, secant theta. So u is equal to secant theta. And then, of course, that's just differentiate both sides. We get du. Uh, in terms of theta, we get secant theta tangent theta d theta, okay? The derivative of secant is that. Okay, let's see what do we have. This is going to be the integral square root, what's u square? We just have to square both sides. So we have secant square theta minus 1. And what's du? du is this. So let's put this down. Secant theta tangent theta d theta. OK. What's the first one? Well, inside here, secant square theta minus 1. We can use this. That's the same as tangent square. But then it's inside of the square root. So altogether, this is the same as tangent. Altogether, it's just a tangent theta. OK? Altogether, it's just a tangent. OK? This is like, if you would like, inside it's um, tangent square, and then you take the square root. So altogether, you get um, just a tangent. But then here we have a tangent from this entire thing. We have another tangent. So altogether, we have tangent square. And we can look at this integrals. Secant square, I mean secant theta. This is only secant theta tangent square theta d theta okay so that's how it works and now the question becomes like how can we integrate this if you have watched my videos on how we integrate secant to a third power uh, this somehow appears and the idea is that we have to take this tangent square and replace this with secant square theta minus one okay Tangent square is the same as secant square theta minus 1. So what are we talking about? After we distribute this data, secant theta, into these parentheses, we are talking about the integral secant 
times secant square is secant to the third power theta, and then secant theta times negative one, we have minus secant theta d theta. Whew. Okay? And now, how can we integrate secant to the third power theta? You can check out my video right here, this one. <laughs> but then, let me just tell you the result. Secant to the third power of any variable that you're using, so I put down the u, okay? This is going to be one half secant tangent. So um, uh, technically, I should use theta right here to reduce confusions, okay? But then it's just a matter of which variable that you're using. So secant to a third power is going to be one half secant times tangent. Let me write that down right here. And I'm just applying the formula, okay? So secant to a third power, we get one half secant theta tangent theta. I'm talking about theta in this case. And that's only the first part. We have to add one half ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta. Okay, so that's the first part. And then to integrate um, secant theta to the first power, okay? Well, first of all, let's put on the subtraction. This right here, it's that, where the u is the theta. So we're talking about theta in this situation. And that's something that you should have to remember as well. The integral of secant theta is the same as ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta, okay? And we can see that this is one half this part and that part are the same. So this is like one half minus one. So this is the, the same as minus one half, if you would like. And if you would like, let's just really put that down. This is one half secant theta tangent theta and combining these two terms together before we do anything else, we get minus one half ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta, okay? We are done with the integration part, but then this integral, the result right here, right, the result right here is still in the theta world. So we have to go back. Now the question is, how exactly can we find secant theta and tangent theta in terms of x? Well, as we can see, we know u is equal to secant theta. So that's pretty nice. And perhaps I have run out of the space. If you guys don't mind, let me put a triangle right here. Draw a small triangle. And we have a right angle here. Put the theta right here. And then we are talking about u. And this is like u over 1. Because we want to look at this as a fraction. And instead of a right triangle, secant means what? It means hypotenuse over adjacent. We have u over 1. So that means we have u right here and 1 right here. And that will imply that the other side, the opposite side, is going to be this square minus that square, which is u square minus 1. And we can use this picture to help us out to figure out tangent theta. Anyways, 1 half stays the same. And secant theta right here is just u. So that's really nice. I love that. So we have the u right here. But then for the tangent theta, as you can see right here, we have to use this triangle. And tangent is what? In the right triangle. Tangent means the opposite side over adjacent. And we have square root of u squared minus 1 over 1. So we just have that. So for the tangent theta, it's just going to be square root of u squared minus 1. And we can continue with the rest. We have the minus 1 half ln absolute value. And secant theta is just u, so that's good. Plus, tangent theta is what? We just talk about it is this over that, which is just square root of u squared minus 1 instead of the absolute value. Okay? So this expression was in the theta world, and now we took it to the u world, but then I still have to get back to the x world. But let's just do it real quick, okay? Well, let's, let's see. Um, altogether, we have one half. U is what? U is x plus 1. The U is x plus 1. So U is equal to x plus 1. And inside here, we have square root. But the U is x plus 1. Let me just write down x plus 1 right here. Square and then minus 1. And you guys can pretty much do this on your own, but I'm just saying I don't want to finish videos. Anyways, minus 1 half. Ln 
helps to follow you. And then here we have the u right here, and u is once again x minus uh, x plus one. So the x plus one right here, and then square root of we have the plus oh by the way, plus square root of u square, which is like that. So we have the x plus one square and then minus one on the very outside. Just like this. But then <laughs> I think in the uh, the answer in the back of the book, they kind of multiply this out, so we'll do that just real quick. So here we have 1 half x plus 1, no big deal. But then what's this? What's x plus 1 parentheses squared minus 1? This is the same as the very original, because this is the same as that. So for this part, we're just going to replace x squared plus 2x. Multiply it out, combine terms if you would like. And then the last part, we have the minus 1 half, ln, and let me just make this the absolute value shorter. But then technically, I don't need absolute value because the inside is always positive, because this is going to be bigger than the x for sure. So let me just change to parentheses. We have x plus 1, and then plus the inside here is going to be square root, and we have that pretty much. x square plus 2x, parentheses, and then we are done. <laughs> so we put print, uh, plus c, and then box the answer right away. Okay, just like that.